There is an invasion taking place. We knew they were coming. It was only a matter of time. But now they are here and they're spreading. Quag muscle actually, quag and zebra muscle, invasive muscles. Something that gets this big is a really big one. Or there could be thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands in a drop of these velligers. They're microscopic, so you really can't see them. The thing is, they reproduce so much, it's the numbers. It's not so much their size, it's the amount. It's the amount of muscles that can clog up a, a large drain pipes, can clog up your boat. And, you know, uh, we in the Southwest, we kind of depend on water moving. So that really can affect us here in the Southwest. And it is, uh, again, here at Havasu and at Mead, you know, uh, uh, dam operations. Uh, that they've had to, in fact, uh, oddly enough, some of the things they've had to do is uh, really maintain their fire suppression. Because the fire suppression, of course, that's tubing all over the all over the dams. I'm being simplistic, but tubing all over the dams. Well, if that gets clogged up and something happens to a, a generator that costs millions of dollars, and they say it, again, catches on fire or something, that sort of, eh, that's not a good deal. And, uh, you know, they've, and they've found evidence of those being in those areas. They get everywhere. Well, in back in 2007, uh, we found evidence of, uh, well, we found a lot of evidence <laughs> that they were in Mead. And then in that same year, we found, a, whoops, they're also in Mojave. Whoops, they're downstream in Havasu. And, oh, goodness gracious, now they're in Pleasant, all in the same year. So basically, they all got infested about the same time. In 2011, quagga mussels were found to infest Red Mountain Lake, an urban fishing lake in Mesa, Arizona. This is a very popular fishing spot. This is a very intensely managed park, a very intensely managed fish stocking program. And this is a very popular park that the city of Mesa owns and operates. And we work as a partnership with the city of Mesa to run it as an urban fishing program lake. Having the quagga mussels in one of our urban fishing program lakes is very new for us. This is the first urban fishing program lake that has had quagga mussels. So today what we have is we have uh, two divers that are going in the water and uh, there are specific locations that we know that have quagga mussels in them. We're going to send them off to look at those, take some pictures, some underwater pictures and some underwater video. Uh, we did set some PVC uh, marker in the water as well for them to check and just to gauge how quickly this population is establishing and growing within this lake. In their native habitat they reproduce once or twice a year. Here we have noted them reproducing up to seven times a year. Uh, they like our water temperatures and, and one female produces one million eggs a year and so that kind of gives you an idea of how fast they they grow and and how prolific they are. Uh, that looks like a quagga mussel right there. You need to dump it out and, and sift through them. On this dive, the team finds only large adult quagga mussels. So they're same size. The same. They're same size, so that's... That's crazy. all those red ear sunfish we stocked. In. They think the smaller, younger mussels may have been eaten by a certain fish they stock in the lake. Right now, <laughs> we're saying that the red ear sunfish that uh, we, we've put into the lake have been effective and that we're finding fewer quagga mussels than we found six months ago and a year ago. Uh, but we definitely need more data. We'll be back again in May or June in, in about another six months and, and dive again just to, to get better water quality, a little more time in the, in, the, uh, in the lake to be sure. But so far, that's the, only, that's the only explanation at this point is that it looks like red ear sunfish have been effective in, in helping reduce the quagga mussel population. Back at Lake Havasu, a different approach must be taken. Yeah, redder sunfish love to eat these things. A redder sunfish is just that, he's a sunfish. They're what we call a molluscivore, so they eat mollusks, and that's great. So they love chomping on these things. That's wonderful. In fact, over the past few years, we've gotten some uh, state records out of Lake Havasu for redder sunfish. Now let's look at this though. Red, redder sunfish are not native <laughs> to Arizona, or actually to the west. They're, they're from Mississippi drainage, just like largemouth bass. So they're, they're not native fish anyway. Secondly, yes, they like eating these uh, quagga mussel. So we've gotten state records out of Lake Havasu, but we still have a lot of mussels. We're not gonna get rid of mussels with red ear sunfish. Now we get big, happy, and sassy red ear sunfish, but we still have plenty of mussels. Well, today we're out at uh, Lake Havasu uh, State Park, uh, specifically Windsor Beach, and we're out talking to the boaters. Uh, we're gonna talk to them about the don't move a mussel message. Uh, now it's the law. 
Well, when they leave an aquatic invasive species affected lake, which is what Havasu is, which is what Mead is, which is what Pleasant is, Lake Pleasant in central Arizona, when they leave that lake, they need to clean, drain, and dry their boats. Basically, what we're trying to tell people is, we don't want to be transporting these mussels, whether it be in standing water or maybe the live adult mussels themselves. So they need to clean their boat off, make sure it's rid of all weeds, anything that might be on the boat, drain it, because you want to get rid of all the water, so pull your plug as you're leaving the lake, you know, before you leave the lake. And then certainly the dry part, as you're driving home, or maybe, maybe you park it up at the boat ramp, it'll dry out. It's Arizona, it should dry pretty quickly. You know, what we're finding out is uh, if, if people don't uh, do the, you know, use the clean drain and dry method, especially the drain part, these things can, you know, uh, these veligers can attach into your boat and actually attach in your engine. And uh, one of the things we're finding is we're finding the, the uh, adult mussels in people's engines in their water cooling system for the engine. Well, that's not real good. You clog that up, next thing you know, you're out in the middle of the lake and all of a sudden your engine seizes because it's, it's now overheated. And you go, why did that happen? Invariably, we've, we found out, oops, goodness gracious, well, you're clogged up with quagga mussels, so you really had no circulation in there at all. And uh, they're, they're happy in there. It's a nice environment, always kind of moist, probably getting fed in there. That's why, you know, we, we, we try and espouse the, uh, the clean, drain, and dry message and also that decontamination stuff, getting in there and using hot water, actually very hot water, <laughs> to go in and maybe uh, uh, clean out your engine. Our best defense to keep quagga mussels away from unaffected lakes like Bartlett, Saguaro, Apache, and Roosevelt is to clean, drain, and dry your boat. Everything, every time. For more information on how you can do your part, visit azgfd.gov AIS.